Hoffa Day, I'm Issa Baza. Welcome back to KOM News Extra. I'm here with Ryan Claris, co-owner at Coach at Custom Fitness, also known as CrossFit Golf Mecca. We're here at their new location, Beachside in Iniqua, and we're counting down the top 10 tips to help you get fit and stay fit in 2016. So Ryan, next on our list is number five, which is incorporate core exercises into your workout regimen. So why is this important? You know, let's, let's, so a lot of times people think of core exercises as just sit-ups, basic sit-ups. And so one of the things that people forget about is the basics. So what, what they want to start doing is uh, incorporating a little bit more isometric or just plank type movements. So planks, meaning high planks, low planks, you could then incorporate sides, but then you can also incorporate any type of weighted carriers. So if you ever carry suitcases, you know, that requires a lot of midline, uh, midline strength, as well as if you ever see a waiter um, at a restaurant, he also is able to carry that over his head. So that also is inclusive of um, gaining some of that uh, midline strength. So it's important because um, Basically, it is what drives the rest of your uh, your body. So if you have a strong midline, uh, you're able to kind of then get stronger everyone else. It just it has to start from somewhere. You know, I've actually noticed that because I'm actually <clears throat> a distance runner, and I've heard from some of my running coaches in the past that developing your core is so important for even things just as simple as running long distance, which sometimes people wouldn't think that the two are related. Uh, so for people who don't know, like, what's one basic core exercise that they can do? Uh, the, the most basic probably uh, exercise that they can do is besides a sit-up um, is just a basic plank and it, it just you just start from a uh, uh, you would just probably most people know the push-up position so you would just get up in a high push-up position um, and just tighten everything uh, you would tighten your glutes abdominals and then tr go ahead and try to push your shoulder blades right through the ceiling it's a little bit of a different twist than a regular uh, kind of standard plank Okay, so how long should you try to hold that plank? You know, it, it really depends. Uh, a lot of times people say uh, ultimate fitness goal is roughly about four minutes. Wow. I've seen uh, some people do roughly about seven, uh, but typically you want to work, work, work your way up. Progression is key. So you can start off with three sets of 30, um, and then you can work up to si uh, in, uh, 30 seconds, or you can do uh, 60 seconds, and you can do three sets of that. All right, thanks, Ryan. Well, moving on, number four on our list is lifting weights. So why is lifting weights important to include in your exercise regimen? So lifting weights is uh, important uh, in a vi variety of things. Now, one of the biggest uh, misconceptions of just uh, just fitness itself is that weightlifting makes you get bulky. Uh, one of the things is that muscle drives energy metabolism. Therefore, the more muscle you have, the higher your metabolism in technically is. So uh, by, by doing that, you could actually drive your metabolism. It also stimulates uh, bone growth. And for those of you who are a little bit older, can it, it also prevents osteoarthritis along with a healthy diet. So there's a, there's a variety of keys as well, as well as just general sports performance. Uh, we see this as young as kids, as young as 11, all the way to um, masters 45 and up. So weightlifting is very important when it comes to uh, uses of weights during functional movement. I've also noticed that with running, weightlifting really helps, or cross training in general helps with um, building your running performance. So, you know, but I've actually heard some concerns from people in the community. You know, some people are worried that, especially women, if they lift too many weights, they could get injured or they could become too bulky. So, do you have any advice? Yes, those are all myths. And one of the th like I said, so what one of the things that you first have to do uh, prior to starting a workout is get someone who is accountable, get someone who is well trained, who is well educated and that would allow you to then kind of work with their programs. If you follow a regimented program, um, there is a highly unlikely chance that you will get hurt. Research shows that actually running, if you only run, you actually have a higher chance of injury as opposed to lifting weights, whereas there's only maybe a 3% chance of getting injured while lifting weights. All right, thanks so much, Ryan. Well, moving on, number two, or number three on our list is cardio. So why is cardio important to include in an exercise regimen? You know, cardio drives the cardiovascular system. So if you're not familiar with that, it just drives the ability for your heart to pump blood through throughout your uh, circulatory system. So all we want to do is make sure that you're able to do functional things and not get tired walking up steps, walking to your car. So it just helps for your overall uh, functionality. Can you give us a few examples of types of cardio uh, exercises and workouts that people can participate in to build their cardio? Sure, again, if you're just a beginner, uh, a simple walking program is, will suffice, uh, anywhere between 15 to 20 minutes a day. The ACSM recommends at least 30 to 60 minutes of moderate type exercise, uh, whether it be walking, swimming, uh, even running, even jogging at that, just so that you can be able to kind of, uh, kind of 
get out of the, um, the minimal uh, working zone and get into that moderate level. So a good way to judge that is that if the talk tests, if we're walking alongside each other and we can talk, we're not walking, working hard enough. So we want to be a little bit winded, but be able to kind of work within that range. All right. So is that 15 to 20 minutes daily? So you can, you can break that up, but the recommendation is a total time of 150 minutes of moderate type exercise and roughly about 60 to 90 minutes of vigorous type exercise. Okay, so what about, you know, I'm, I'm a distance runner, we, I mentioned this earlier, so is it still healthy, still good for your body to run for long distances and keep your cardio up for uh, lengths of time, extended lengths of time? Well, like I said, at, at the end of the day, everyone has their own personal goals. If your goal is to become a runner and a better runner, uh, obviously one of the ways to do that is continue to run. If you like running, you may as well do more of it. Um, so it's just all about progression. Again, if, if you feel that uh, you're uh, getting overtrained or if you're not getting enough sleep, not eating enough, then it's time to kind of start pulling back. All right, thanks, Ryan. Uh, number two on our list is stretching. So why is this important for an exercise regimen? So, um, you know, you need, uh, you need your muscles, tendons, and ligaments to, to move um, in a way that there's in the way that uh, they're meant to. Um, if you have tight muscles, that prevents just movement in general. And what we see a lot is that people don't spend enough time either stretching or the, the ability to mobilize, uh, mobilize meaning working out the joints itself. Um, so all it does is stretching and mobilization kind of preps you or prepares you for your next bout of physical exercise. Um, and it will kind of reduce the risk of soreness and also will again give you the ability uh, to kind of increase performance in general. All right, so I, I know I've heard before that stretching is really important to help prevent injuries. And if you guys didn't know, Ryan is also a physical therapist and they have physical therapy here at Custom Fitness. So can you tell us a little bit about how um, stretching reduces your chances of getting injured? Well, research doesn't show that it actually reduces it, but it actually will help with movement. So anytime you have a dysfunction of movement, a lot of times people will add speed and weight. And what, so what we try to do is try to help with functional movement first, try to get them to move, and then we can then add speed and then we add weight to it. Um, that's a one way, an easy way for injury prevention. All right, well, number one on our list is be consistent and start a healthy habit. So why is this the top tip for people trying to set, get fit and stay fit in 2016? You know, being consistent is probably um, everyone's major flaw. A lot of times they make, they make these goals um, and they, they're not realistic. Um, so my advice to you is you just have to make your goals realistic. Make yourself accountable. Write them down. Uh, if you can do that, at the end of the year, you can tell yourself, you know, I tried. Uh, maybe you may have not hit your goals, but you can tell yourself that, um, that you've tried and that the only way to get better is just to, to try to make your plan a little bit better next time. All right, well, thanks so much, Ryan. Those were our top 10 tips to get fit and stay fit in the new year. That does it for tonight's show. We'll see you next week. Stay healthy, Guam.